This is the video. This is the video. All we're doing. This is the whole video. We're just going to let you, the viewer, you can talk about Tress of the Emerald Sea. And we'll listen to you this time. Welcome to the Overlady Reads. I'm the Overlord. This is my wife, the Overlady. And she reads. What have you read this week, my wife? Thanks. Uh, this week, I read Tress. You listened to Tress. I did. I did listen to Tress. Tress of the Emerald Sea. This is the first of the Kickstarter secret projects. Um, and the best of them. We'll get to that. Um, and yes, uh, you read you read the re the reading book, and I listened to the audio book and looked at the art. When you were like, "Hey, look at the art for this scene," and I've been like, "Yeah." Well, I'm pretty sure you're the one that shoved the art in my face yes, first. I was probably more accurately like that. Um, okay, what did you think of Tress of um, the Emerald Sea? In case I didn't make it clear enough, yeah, within the last like minute. Yep. Uh, it's definitely my favourite of the secret projects. Yep. Um, this is the one that I enjoyed reading the most. Yes. And this is the one that I was most excited about afterwards. Yes. We should probably mention we read all of the secret projects. Ish. Ish. Well, yeah. We'll get there. <laughs> um, yeah, we've read, we've read all of the secret projects. I was a beta reader for Secret Project 4. Um, and then once we've read the way that the project betas is that the, like after we read our the book that we were given uh, we got to read all of them so we've read the betas and then this is our first that we haven't read it since the beta so we haven't read them in like a while yeah. and then we read and because we were waiting until it came out so we could read it when it came out uh, this is our first time reading it when it came out that does obviously affect our opinions we can't talk about our like some of the stuff related to our first impressions but we can talk about. What do you think of the final book? You can't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's all right, because he'll just cut anything I say. Yeah, it's all, good. it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. So I think we just sort of go into it. We're going to talk about the three parts of the book. I know yes. the book is in six parts. Yes, which are but, wildly disproportionate in size. Yeah, but we're going to talk about it in three parts as in the three seas. Yes. Because although Tress lives in the Emerald Sea and the book starts in the Emerald Sea, doesn't stay in the Emerald Sea. Yes, so full spoilers for Tress of the Emerald Sea. Stop watching now if you've not read the book. You should have stopped watching a while ago. Yes, well, we haven't said anything too bad so far. I think I've just mentioned that there's three seas. You have just seas. mentioned that you there I feel like series. that was a spoiler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I'm gonna bet future editor Ben. No, don't. Edit, edit that no, no. earlier. No. So let's talk about the adventures at, on the Emerald Sea. What did you think of like that kind of that? F so Tress starts. Tress Ooh. is on her island, which has a name that I did not write out. Uh, the, rock. That I did. the Rock. The Rock. It's called The Rock. The it's Rock. Really easy. It's a big salty rock. Um, yeah. And the salt from the rock like helps keep the, the verdant aethers at bay um, so that they don't like come on the land, even though it's a little rock. Um, and so that they're, they're good. But it also stops anything from growing there. So it's quite mm. a miserable place to mm. be. And it's sort of just a little rock in the middle of nowhere that's a mine. So yes. anyone that lives there gets that joy. Yeah. Along with not even like being able to look at any like trees or flowers or anything. No trees or flowers or anything. It's like Skadril, Era 1. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like Era 1 yeah. it's, 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 it's a bit it's a miserable place to live. Dirty and no life. Yeah. And so Tress has um, a boyfriend. A boyfriend. Let's let's go with a boyfriend. Yeah. Um, who's Charlie? What do you think of Charlie? Charlie's adorable. Charlie is good. I like Charlie. Charlie so Charlie hates the fact that his dad's the Duke, but yeah. as the Duke's son, he's going to inherit the title. He's going to take over being in charge of the Rock. Yeah. And it's clearly not what Charlie wants. No. But because no one can leave the rock, no one can really join the rock. There isn't any other future for him. Like yeah. that's all that he has. Yeah. So although he doesn't like it, he's sort of got to slowly come to terms with it. And he's doing everything he can to not yes. come to terms with it. Yeah, he's he's very good at 
Well, the, the whole, so that's that one scene. Because we actually really only get like one scene at the beginning with Charlie and Tress. Yeah. Um, but it's such a charming little scene. The two of them are very cute together. Yeah. You're right there, Daisy. What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you joining us for the Tress video? And so, yeah, that little scene is so charming. Mm. Like, the, the, the whole dance they do around whether he's the gardener or whether he's the Duke's son, it's just very cute. Mm. Although we do get to second scene. The se second scene we get of them together is when Charlie has to leave. Yeah. Yeah. But that's just sort of him saying goodbye. Yeah. And he promises her that, because she likes mugs, so every time that he stops off at a port, because they're, they're leaving the rock, because as the Duke, he can leave the rock and his family can go with him. And his dad wants him to marry someone because he doesn't like the fact that Charlie has fallen for this peasant girl. Yeah. So they are going off to find him a wife. And yeah. he promises her that because he wants her, he's going to do everything he can to put the girls off. Yeah. And every port they stop in, he's going to send her back a mug. Yeah. Which is it's just so cute. lovely. It's and he does. Yeah. Yes, he does. I believe he sends five mugs? Or was it the fifth and the cane? The fifth arrived back when the Duke arrived back. Yes, with, with Henry Cavill in tow. Um. <laughs> no. no he is Hen Henry Cavill's intelligent. Okay, that's true. Or at least he, he comes across as intelligent. Yeah, but then Henry I Cavill... can't speak I'm, on I'm, his behalf. I'm thinking of Henry Cavill in Stardust. Like, he's just a big meathead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, very quickly, let's talk about the tone of this book. Firstly, this whole, the whole thing's written in Hoyd's voice, which is amazing. Well, it's told... By Hoyd. Yes, as if Hoyd has is. I think uh, in the acknowledgments, Brendan even said he wanted to write a story which was essentially a full length version of something like The Dragon and the Dog or The mm. Wonder Sale. This is like a full length version of one of those yeah. tales he tells. And I think he does a good job of it. Um, but the whole kind of tone of the book is very like Princess Bride or Stardust. There was another one. Kind of treasure of planet, is he? But less so. But like, yeah. But you're only saying treasure planet it's because boat. it's boats. Because it's boats, yeah. In space, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, they're not in space, but yeah. as in like essentially because of the giant moons and stuff. There's, it, there's a space. It feeling. feels vibe. Space. You know, there's a space vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and so I, li I like I like that vibe. I like that. You know, we like those movies. You know, so yeah. I. The tone was a bit silly for me at points mm. and I'm not a big fan of this way of storytelling to be honest. Oh really? Yeah like I don't know it felt uh, it felt a little bit juvenile okay. but not in a I'm reading a kids book or I'm reading a YA book. Yeah. Just in a oh okay there's a lot of poop jokes and there's a lot yeah. of like that kind of humour. Yeah. Which I've got nothing against it. It's just not always my thing. So yeah. it, it, like, it didn't put me off reading it. It wasn't like Error 2. Yeah, yeah. Like, it didn't take That's... away from my enjoyment of it. Yeah. But there was just times where I was a bit like, okay, come on. That's really interesting. I thought you would have loved that kind of, that, that style of writing. I like more serious books. Mm. Like... That's fair. That's yeah. fair. I know it's it's the kind of wordplay that I like, where they're like you play with words that I like, um, where you just kind of you, you 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 get turns of phrase, you turn them around, and then you go around with the phrase. It's you know it's like it's playing yeah. with words, and I I really like that kind of wordplay. I think it's fun. Don't get me wrong. Like <laughs> yeah. as I said, it didn't take away from my enjoyment. I did like it. Yeah. It's just that at times it felt went on a bit too long or yeah. it felt a bit too much for that moment and I wish a couple of scenes had a bit more of like a serious pull to them. Yes. But again, this was my favourite of the secret projects. <laughs> yeah. And even that slight thing that I didn't like didn't take away from that. Yeah. So okay. it's all good. Cool, good. Um, okay, so Charlie goes off to find, or the Duke takes Charlie to go find a wife for yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, he has to go marry a, a princess. Yeah. It's so, some princess from somewhere. Yeah. Uh, after, yeah. I, I can't remember if it was, I think it's after a year. Hmm. Because there's yeah. a couple of time jumps before yes. Tress leaves the rock. Yeah. I believe it's a year later he returns with his newly married son. Yeah. Who is... Not, not his not son. Not Charlie. And very much, as you said, the picture that comes to my head 
is the guy that the girl was supposed to be in love with. Yeah. Humphrey? I have a feeling. Let's go with Humphrey. Humphrey sounds right. Humphrey sounds yeah. right, but I have a feeling Humphrey might have been the main guy in Stardust. Maybe. I'm talking about the love interest of the blonde haired girl that the main character is fighting for at yes. the beginning. Yes. Um, that's yeah. played by Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill and Stardust, yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's the image I have in my so head. So there's 100% why I had in my head as well. Not Henry Cavill himself. Yes. Just to. You yeah. know, distinguish between the characters. I was going to say, this character in Tress probably doesn't play Warhammer. So, you know, it's... Uh... Stop. Stop. <laughs> Stop with his one and only character flaw. Um, Honestly, you have to remind me of this every time. It's every like you're day. trying to put me off him. Um, so, okay. Um, so Tress decides to go on an adventure. Slightly. Yes. Um, it's... Tress gets told by one of the servants that his dad sent him off to go and bargain with the sorcerer yes. on the king's behalf and he was captured and, and that's ransom. why he's brought yeah. back this other guy to now be his son and heir yeah so tress is like oh okay so she like wallows in sorrow for a couple of months and then she's like now nah, i'm gonna go and find him yeah yeah so she devises a really cool plan of like making fake barrels and sneaking onto a ship without the can't remember the name of the, the post. In investigator the it's, it's something like that but the person yeah. that checks stock before it goes onto the ship yeah. to make sure that no one's leaving the island can catch her and like the plan seems to go wrong but it doesn't because tress is pretending to be the investigator Inspe person. inspector 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 Whilst the actual inspector is still in bed because they've like fucked with like the schedules and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like that was really cool. Like it was really well done. And then she gets onto this boat and um they don't want her on there, but they accept her because yeah. she's like, I can't believe people would try and escape the rock. I'm gonna go and tell the king. Yes. So I get on this boat and they're gonna take me to the king. And they're yeah. like yeah. Sure, okay. And then after getting on the boat, they poison her and lock her in the brig. Because they are smugglers and having a royal inspector on board kind of... <laughs> Doesn't go with the vibe. In, yeah, it gets in the way of the whole smuggling thing. Yeah. Um, and as she's locked up in the uh, brig... She, she meets... She meets Huck. a Huck. Huck. A little He's ratty like, boy. A little ratty boy. I love him. He's a him. little rat lad. He's so yeah. sweet. Hmm. And I really like him. Yeah. I, I can't say much more about Huck, except he's just the cutest little rat. Yeah. And they're best friends. Yeah. And then some pirates attack the yes. smuggler ship. Yeah. And in the middle of the fighting, Tress and Huck, like the sea comes to a standstill. Yes. Which is really cool. I really like the, 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 these little calm periods, the sea Yeah. Things. And then Tress is like, well, the only way for me to survive without being a prisoner on the smuggler ship is to walk across to the other ship and hope for the best. Yeah. So that's what she does. She does. Yeah. And after hanging off the side of the boat for 15 minutes, once yeah. the sea started up again, they finally let her join the crew. Yeah. It's and really so, cool. yeah. And so now, now she's a pirate. Yeah. There's, there's, let us, let us talk about Huck a little bit. Okay. Because we can't. Fine. We'll address the rat in the room. Yeah. So, the, not, not you, not you, not you, not you. You're a pig. Um, <laughs> so the the reason we can't say too much about Huck is obviously we have to talk about when we realised that he was Charlie. Um, but obviously our first time reading it was the beta, and we're not allowed to say talk about like the differences between the beta and the actual book. So it's gonna be like I realised near the end, but then I'm really dumb. Um, I think you worked it out. When did you work it out? I worked out I believe when they were on the Crimson. Yes. There was and at the point where I don't I think they were still on the Crimson, but where yeah. Huck betrays them. Yeah. That's when I worked out that something wasn't quite right about him. Yeah. On this read, yeah. it felt a lot more obvious that Huck was Charlie. Yeah. Um he I felt like he was a lot more rambly. Yeah. And he was a lot sort of more, let's talk about something random for hours on end. Yeah, like Whereas that was like- I don't remember that. 
Yeah. From reading it before. Yeah. And I feel like that, if I if I gone if I started with this version, I feel like yeah. I would have worked out who Huck was. Earlier. Sooner? Yeah. So. Yeah. I, and that's the thing is like we we know one thing about um, Charlie from like the two seeds we have of him. And that is, <laughs> <laughs> and that is he likes to ramble and he likes to tell stories yeah. and you know, and Love so him. he's, he's great. And um, that's like, then Huck, you know, was, was doing that. And not only was he doing that, but Tress kept saying just how much that helped like mm. it wasn't like a case of her she he would just ramble she'd ignore him she'd be like oh we you know he talked to me for hours and it felt me much better and it made me feel yeah. much better and i was like oh, okay like i feel like it's very much more i feel like yeah it was you could have worked it out earlier than i did when i first read it yeah um and so it was it was good i enjoyed it yeah so yeah mm. tress is a pirate now tress is a pirate now um the pirate crew is cool. Yes. Um, I love Fort. Yeah, Fort is great. I love his little communication board. I just think that's so cool. Yeah. And like, I liked getting that new little, yeah. little peak of technology. Little bit, little bit of awakened connection circuits, whatever that means. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. Um, there was that, and then he was like, <laughs> and then it was predictive text, and he was saying, mm. how, oh, he was typing it, and like a little predictive, so you can, you can almost imagine what the other side looks like, you know, with the <laughs> keyboard and like the, the kind of suggested words. Yeah. Um, Lola duck. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you reckon they have ducks? They have birds. I, oh. I don't think they have ducks. I don't think they have ducks, no. They'd have to swim in the spores. Yeah. And I don't think anything swims in the spores. Yeah. Because like, that's why they fish for seagulls, because they yes. clearly don't have fish. Because they can't fish for fish, yeah. I wonder if they have land Wait, fish. So, how do the, what do the seagulls eat if they're. What do the seagulls eat? Because they're not eating fish. Oh. Dead people <laughs> dead people could be dead people i was also just thinking they could maybe they follow like the rains around and they eat the bird like vines that grow probably because you can't eat that so but then yeah. why would you find them on the crimson well they didn't say so they only like saw like three on the crimson yeah yeah but so even could be so migrating. why would you yeah. yeah but you wouldn't migrate without a food source mm, true. i don't know i've never migrated before right so, yeah brandon so that that's a question what for do brandon. seagulls eat what do they eat the seagulls the seagulls what do they eat like, um, I now need to know. We need to know. Need like, to know. is there like some like six degrees of separation where the seagulls are eating dead bodies, and then now people eat the seagulls? So people are technically eating people, like, or are they invested know? seagulls, and therefore they survive off spores? Maybe, maybe. Either way, so they, need to know. yeah. Uh, Fort's great. I I liked Anne. Anne was the cannon, the one that couldn't, the one yes. that needed glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the I liked Anne. I think Anne was the. Well, I mean, Fort's. I think it's easy to say Fort's your favourite, but mm. I, also, I also really liked Anne. Sole, I was like, eh, I was like, eh, Sole's all right. Uh, she seemed really sweet. She seemed, she seemed nice. Everyone on the she crew seemed nice. really nice. Yeah. I yeah. loved Crow. Crow yeah. was my favourite. Crow's great. Crow, Crow was so as, good. I'm like, I, I actually kind of struggle to imagine Crow in my head, like what she looks like. Um, I think he described her really early on as like horrendously ugly. No. Um, no? No, she just looks yeah. quite standard. Okay. And then like... Every now and then you get a little cheeky bit of vine. Cheeky bit of vine. <laughs> like little um, tentacles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> seen that movie. Yeah. And um, yeah, Crow was cool. I like Crow. Mm. Um, the that uh, those kind of early stages where Tress is playing playing games with people. Tress. One thing I liked about this book is Tress felt like a very smart character. Yes. I'm like she's like working out other people's motivations. And like making plans based on what she'd worked out, but then also kind of what's the word when you like she was working out their motivations, but then she'd realized they'd worked out her motivations, so then she was like adjusting. Countering her. It. She was she was doing lots of countering, she was playing lots of yeah. mind games with people. Yes. And I, it, I appreciate the mind the games. The mind games so were good. Much. And so yeah, it just felt cool that we just Tress just felt very smart. Tress yeah. was a great character. Yeah. Like she didn't feel like she was wonderful and could do everything straight yes, away yeah but she, because she was clever she was calculating yeah and because she was calculating she was able to work out lots of things yeah. like she becomes the ship's sprouter yes and she very quickly works out 
like how to how the aether stuff yeah. works which yeah. we're still working out so we're well still working her. out the aether stuff works so yeah well to her <laughs> um, um yeah yeah it's really cool seeing her just be such a good strong character yeah because again that's the thing about brandon he writes really good female characters yeah and like competent characters mm, mm. and i really enjoyed tress working everything out and working yeah all the different spores and stuff. I just yeah. thought it was really cool. Yeah. So, like, I appreciated it a lot. Oh, so speaking of different spores, I have a complaint about this book. I have a complaint. And Brandon's normally really good with, like, you like having world-building elements and then having the language of the world reflect those world-building elements. Yeah. He kept referring to the stick that they <laughs> used to fire the cannon as a firing stick. The reason it's called a firing stick is because there's a little fire at the end of it on a normal cannon with gunpowder that you put into the cannon and it sets fire to the gunpowder, expose it. This, that's not how cannons work in Tress. It should be called a watering stick because you I, add water to the cannon and the cannon, I don't want to say fires, the, the cannon blows out. I don't know. Um, the problem is watering stick. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't convey the image of what it is. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, it just doesn't work. <laughs> it just doesn't work. But in my like, head, it every makes time, me yeah. feel like it's yeah. some sort of like gardening device. Yeah, like a watering can, but in stick form. In stick form. I mean, just call yeah. it a watering can. I would just be fine with that. <laughs> that they fire the cannons with watering cans. Yeah, I think yeah. that'd be cute. But even now, very even, whimsical. Very whimsical. Even now, I am. Um, I, I'm saying they fire their cannons, but they don't. They water their cannons because it's not fire. Yeah. There's no fire involved. They like uh, gunpowder is never mentioned, so I have a feeling they don't have gunpowder. They don't because yeah. they use aphids. Because they use the zephyrs, um, and so I don't know. I don't know what you'd use instead of the word fire for the cannon. Again, like, just they got out their watering. Cannon they got out their water the cannon. They watered the cannon, and the Kyle watered out. It, yeah. It, <laughs> but yeah. Um, okay. So the, the the spores would burst out or. The can would yeah. explode out. Yeah, you I don't have explode. to say it waters out yeah. because obviously, like the water doesn't the, the water is the, make yeah. it that far. Yeah, but yeah, no, the I, cannon explodes. It, that yeah. that didn't bother me so much because I'm not yeah. such a cannon <laughs> a cannon enthusiast. <laughs> like, it bothers me when I'm reading a book and they tell people to fire a bow and arrow. I'm like, no, you lose a bow and arrow. You fire a bow and arrow. That's a gunpowder thing. I know you've had this rant many a time. <laughs> Joe Abercrombie. I've finished the first law recently. The first law trilogy, and everyone fires bows in the first law trilogy. It bothers me every time. Every every, every book that's got bow and arrows, they end up firing at some point. I know it bothers me. I know it does. Um, okay, I'm gonna write a book all about <laughs> archery, where all they're gonna do is fire arrows, yeah. and it's gonna be dedicated. But, uh, to you. I do get why they had a firing stick because the language just works better that way. It sounds weird when you say a cannon explodes because it's not a kind of book. So, <laughs> okay, okay, sorry, wow. too much movement. Yeah, apparently so. Honestly. Um, actually, I might have my tea, actually. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, the actual mm, drinks. Mm. Aether stuff. Aether so stuff. Aether stuff's cool. So, the moons are, like, ravenous. Um, I don't know why to use the word corrupted, but something's wrong with them. They're not yeah. like the aethers on whatever the aether world is called. I can't remember what it's called. Um, they're not like that. They are some ravenous aethers that just came to this planet, chill out on top of the planet, um, and just pour their compressed aethers down onto the planet. Yeah, it uh, rains which, aethers all day. It rains aethers all day, which is cool. Um, but yeah, so, so she learns a bit. There's a bit of back and forth between Tress and Crow and the, and the crew to try and... Crow wants the crew to become dead runners so that they're united, so that they'll go with her to the Crimson Sea. And there's a bit of espionage and spying as Tress trying to find out what Crow is actually up to. Yeah. And that's when we meet the Midnight Aether. Ooh. Mm. Love the Midnight Aethers. Yeah. Do you know what I like? I liked Weave, right? Weave, I felt, we got a good enough of information about Weave to like, he was almost a character that was like, he was the ship's old Sprouter. But we got enough of him where I like, oh, I've got a pretty good idea of the kind of person, like what Weave was like. Mm. I liked that. I liked, I like it when books like give a good characterization of a character that's not there and is obviously dead. So it's like, he's never going to sell. Yeah. Yes. Unlike the other corpse. Unlike the other Unlike the other corpse! Oh my god, let me talk about Lam. Let's talk about Lam. Oh my god, I'm so excited <laughs> to talk about Lam. Okay. So, uh, 
<laughs> Let's go for the ca- the calendar in the room then. Let's talk about the calendar in the room, shall we? Did you want to talk about your alarm thoughts? Um, yeah. Um, alarm again on my first read took me way too long to work out that he was a Kandra. What did you think he was first? <sighs> I always remember you thought he was something else. Quite an interesting thing. To I think he was. thought he was. I can't remember what I thought he was to begin with, hmm. but it was another. Oh, I think you might have thought he was a sleepless, one of the bug people. Oh yeah. I think you yeah, thought yeah. he was a bug people. Was, yeah, you thought, I thought he was, he was a bug, bug people. people. Yeah. But like again on this read I'm like it's obvious. The, Obviously. The moment in even in my first read, the moment he turned up and he was described, I was like, that's a contract. No, 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 no. No, no, no. no? <laughs> I didn't think he was a bug people. Yeah. I thought he was Hoyd Spren. You thought it was design. Yes. Yes, that was it. I thought it was design because he's described as having like strange looking skin and like red eyes. And I was like, so he's clearly not any kind of humanoid we've met. Yeah. And then I know that Yasna's spren obviously has like... The the, um, black like glassy skin. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. So it must be Hoyd's spren. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Because... I thought it was him because he's traveling with Hoyd. Yes. So I assume Hoyd is traveling with his spren. Yes. So I assume that that was his spren. Yeah. Pretending to be human so that he could keep an eye on Hoyd. Yes. And then, of course, because I had already gone down that road. <laughs> you were really down that, yeah. Completely did not acknowledge any of the Kandra stuff. Yeah. Until later on in the book when they start talking about Sazed yeah. and given true form and I'm like you're like oh yeah fine, yeah fine I, I like I think for me it was just immediate I was like oh this is a contra I think I actually was like oh the other corpse on board that was like walking around I was like oh there's a contra on board that's cool <laughs> um and it, it's really love that it's like oh th- th- this contra just Ulam does not care about um appearing as a human he is like oh yeah no I don't have a heartbeat um and I like run on the so I, like in order to reduce my calorie intake, I just run, like, I don't have a heartbeat. My eyes are, like, blood red because, like, I don't know, I assume not having a heartbeat causes well, that kind of thing. I um, assume that it's a personal choice. Yeah, it's just a like, personal choice. Like, why not? Yeah, he's, 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 and, like, Hoyt keeps commenting, he's like, ever since they, they said let them go, yeah. they've gotten weirder. And I'm like, yeah. yes, I'm here for the weird Kandra. I really want the weird Kandra. <laughs> yeah. It's like, bring yeah. them on. Yeah. Like, the, um, the weirder the better. The weirder the better. Like, you know, some of the Kandra like to do bones. Um, the guy in the Era 2. They like to do bones, They like do to they? do bones. The guy in Era 2 liked hands. And then Ulam's just like, oh yeah, give me all your organs. I just yeah. want all your organs, please. I yeah. just, I like, and then he but mentioned- I'm also going like, to grow my own organs randomly on my body, mm-hmm. just as spares. And then he mentioned he had a little monster in the desk that he was building. So Ulam's great. I love Ulam. Yeah. I am here for the sequel, yeah. which turns out to just be a Frankenstein. Book. Yeah, yeah, well, absolutely. And can I talk about Michael Sorry. Kramer's... D- Sorry, uh, Ulam's yeah. monster. Ulam's where monsters. Frankenstein is an actual <laughs> monster. Can I talk about Michael Kramer's decision on the voice that he gave Ulam? You can, but I didn't hear it. So yes. So go ahead. Michael Kramer, in his Infinite Wisdom, gave Ulam the voice of the guy from The Simpsons that goes, Yes! And so the whole book... Ulam's like, Atreus, can I give you a hunt? And I'm like, Kramer, what are you doing? I'm like, what are you saying? And he's like, mm, I'm growing an ear on my arm. And I'm like, this is not how I imagined him we, at all. I was going to say, we have just been doing this voice at each other yeah. all week. I'm like, oh, it is, it is. It was wild to me and I was thoroughly enjoyed it. But yeah, it's just not the voice I would have given you on. But based on I my feel first like, but it, Kandra, you've got to go with It's fine. It's going to, yeah, it's, it's fine. fine. It, it amplified the weirdness of him. Yeah. Yes. It was good. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, now back to Midnight Aethers. So back to Midnight Aethers. So <laughs> when you, when you add some water to a Midnight Aether, it turns into a little goopy monster, <laughs> a little Midnight Essence. Um, which you can then control. Now, we have seen Midnight Essences before, haven't we? Yes, I definitely remember the Midnight Essences that we've seen before. I'm assuming Era 2. Nope. Oh. Um, Oathbringer. The Reshafir, the Unmade. 
sends out those goopy monsters into Irithyria. Oh, yeah. Yeah, same thing. That was a long time that ago. That was a long like, time ago. <laughs> my brain <laughs> yeah, doesn't go back that far. Yeah. Um, and so that's, it's this, the, they're called the same thing. We don't know if they're exactly the same thing, but like there's a lot of things in the, the, the Cosmere that are very similar and have the same name. For example, light weaving. Mm. Different myths of light weaving, same effect, so we just call it light weaving. So it seems like Midnight Essence that we may not this may not be the last time we see it in terms of like other magics may have ways of doing it but yeah you just get this little goopy thing which wants to take the form of things around it and drink um, all the water and drink all the water um i mean they all want to drink all the water all the others yeah, yeah. really want water these are like alive and wanting to drink water and there's the they create a luen bond which is different to a nahel bond which is the bond that spren have with their radiance um and that's this is one way you give rather than giving sentience. That's what the the Nahelbond does. It gives the spren the ability uh, to live. Thank in you. Yeah, 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 I definitely knew that. Yeah, 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 it gives it gives the spren the ability to live in the physical realm and like gives them sentience and higher thought. And then the Luel bond just gives water. Mm. Um, and yeah, and so it's 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 cool. There was a, she turned it into a little rat and she went and she did some smying. Yeah, and she found out that Crow wants to go see. The dragon. Um, now, this dragon, uh, Zixis? And yeah. how, how would you say it? Zixis. Zixis, yeah. I think Zixis makes sense to me. I mean, no one goes off my pronunciation. Exactly. We all know that. Yeah. Um, so, the. Um, this dragon's also been mentioned before. Um, in the. I want to say Rhythm of War, Ars Arcanum. You can see I didn't do research before we made this video. <laughs> More than I did. Yeah, in the Rhythm of War, Ars Arcanum, um, there was... Or it might have been Lost Metal. It might have actually been Lost Metal. I don't know. It's mentioned that Zixis is studying Aethers underneath his oceans. And we were like... We, or we were wondering what that meant for a few years. And now we know it's these oceans he's studying Aethers under. Why did I know that? Because I probably mentioned it during the video we made for either the Lost Medal. You or must have done because there yeah. is no way if it was non in an uh, Arzakanum okay. thing. You I never read the Arzakanum. I don't think I've <laughs> even opened it. Do you even know what an Arzakanum is? No. Nope. <laughs> there you I, go. I assume it's those pages at the back of the book that I don't read. That explain the magic system. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why yeah. I don't know the magic system. There's some good info in there. I'm um, sure there is. Hmm. Uh, you can keep it to yourself. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so she's going. So Crow's going to the Crimson Sea um, mm. to go find Zixis to cure her of her sproutiness, yes. spore eaterness. Yeah, because yeah. although she loves being a spore eater, because yeah. why would you not love being, being able to grow? Basically, to... immortal. Yeah. yeah, and like these tentacles that like will go out of their way to keep mm. you alive because they need you to keep drinking water. Yeah, so that they can stay alive. Yeah, and as much as she loves that. Um, She's already lived longer than anyone else that's become a spore eater. Yeah. Just through short, like, Force sheer will. stubbornness. <laughs> She's just so stubborn. I love her. It's great. It's like, great. I really like her. I, I didn't think Brandon would ever make a character after me, but here we go. <laughs> <laughs> a tremendously stubborn person. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's needed. <laughs> it's needed. Um... But here she is, and she's beautiful. Oh, yeah. great. Um, so she's going to the dragon because he's literally the only one on the planet that can cure her of her spores. Yes. And if she doesn't get them out of her soon, because at the moment the rate of water she's having to drink to satisfy them is Insane. excessive. Yeah. And she can't maintain it anymore. No. So she's got to go and have them removed. And the way that you do that is you go to the dragon with someone that's not afraid of spores and you offer them in service mm -hmm. in return. Yes. So, uh, hey Tress. <laughs> hey Tress, how you doing? So this, on the spore eater quickly, I realized since they're talking about like, this is, she's a verdant spore eater. So she's got tentacles and stuff. And so there must be other types, right? So yeah. there must be like, Zephyr C for the, for the blue. Is Zephyr blue? I feel like Zephyr's blue. Is Zephyr blue? Zephyr's gold. I definitely don't think Zephyr's gold. One of them's gold. So and I'm like sure it's the light one that. Yeah, is yeah, gold. there's yeah, there's um there's sun but there's like like a sunburst one. Um which right, there's like five. A there's there's five. five. We've got emerald, we've got crimson, we've got uh midnight. midnight. Uh we've got Zephyr, which I think is like a light blue. Yeah, yeah, there's a yeah. blue one. And then there's like a yellow one, which is where the which create light. 
There yes. we go. Um, and so I'm like, cool. What would... So there must be like a Zephyr Spore Eater. So like if you shoot a Zephyr Spore, does like a burst of air come or like, sh- like shoot? They like, fly. They, they fly. They That's fly. What they, do. they must... Obviously they can fly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Midnight ones just are constantly surrounded by cute little animals. God. <laughs> that very, must be very inconvenient. Um, no. Or no, you'd love it. Never mind. What am I talking? What, like, what am I talking? It would be like this. It would be like actually being a Disney princess. <laughs> yeah. And they don't want to keep biting you yeah. every time that you try and stroke them. But the, I will. The one that makes me laugh is is like this is like the the light ones. You don't bite me. How can how 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 can sports that produce light help you? You know, unless um, they do heat. Do they do heat as well? I can't remember. They must do. Or. Mm. You've just got this amazing glowing skin that, like, you can always see yeah. in the dark. Yeah. If you're scared of the dark... That's a great one to have. It's, like, ideal. Yeah. Especially if, like, you don't want anyone else to be able to sleep in your company. Yeah. It's perfect. It's great, yeah. I wonder if they, like, shoot lasers at bullets. Like, a bullet Maybe comes towards them and just laser comes out of their face. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. A cool laser face. Right. Crimson. We'll add it to the questions <laughs> for Brandon. We'll, we'll add it to the questions for We've Brandon. We've got a list. We've got a list now. He's gonna hate us. It's gonna be great. When he ever comes to the UK. When it, yeah. If he ever comes back to the UK. Ugh. It's been five years, Brandon. Five, five, years, Brandon. five years, Brandon. Five years. Wait, it's 23 years. It's been six years. Six years. Ugh, six ugh. years, Brandon. No, no, no. Ugh. Come on. Mm-hmm. We've got a long list of questions. For so, they're currently on the Verdant Sea. Yeah. Um, that's where most ships travel because it's quite a safe sea to travel mm. through. Um, when they shot down Tress's boat, no one survived, even though they were supposed to have one survivor, he ended up dying. Yeah. So because of that, no one actually knows that they're dead runners. Yeah. So Tress now knows that Crow needs to kill another crew. We, they did that with fake cannonballs. So she swaps out the cannonballs. Yeah. Crow discovers that she sabotaged them. And she's like, hey, I need to get to the Crimson as well. If I can convince the crew to go to the Crimson, yeah. can we not kill anyone else yes because she was gonna like tress had come up with a plan where she had sort of convinced crow that she was on that boat yeah she's a survivor if they went to a island and she happened to escape she would tell people she can tell people they're dead runners um, but then she decided to stay because she wanted to help the crew yeah and obviously she's already on a boat that's where she needs to be yeah so she's the others, I think they think that she's a king's mark at this point. Yes. And they think that she's got a plan to rescue them from Crow. Yeah. So she's very, very able to convince them to easily sail the Crimson. Able. Yeah, easily able to. The crew is on board, so they're going to go sail the Crimson. They head off to the Crimson. Yeah. Mm. Beautiful artwork in the book, by the way. Yes, I really like that. So, they enter. The Crimson. Mm. So this sea is slightly different to the Verdant Sea, where the Verdant Sea has vines that come out when the Aether gets exposed to water. This has big red spikes. Yes. Um, it's very cool. Um, very cool. Very cool. It's also different to the Emerald, because mm. unlike the Emerald, that has like tiny little like whizzy rain... Yes, which are predictable. Predictable patterns. This one's rain patterns are very unpredictable mm-hmm. and much heavier. Yes. And when you're in a little wooden boat, you don't really want mm-hmm. the area underneath you to turn into sharp spikes. Yes. Large sharp spikes. That tends to end badly for things like wood, people. body, people. Um, and so, yeah, you don't want that. Maybe rats. Maybe rats. Probably we'll find out want... next time. Yeah, who knows? You know, the rat might be small enough that you can just dodge the spikes. You know? Yeah. It's, yeah, easy. It depends how intelligent they are. Yeah. Rat, yeah. no, actually rats are really intelligent. Rats are really intelligent. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Um, they enter the crimson. Yep. And Tress does some experimenting with the aethers. Not yet. Not yet? What happens um, first? So the first thing that happens in the Crimson yeah. is my one and only thing that I did not enjoy. Okay. Um, so they cross into the Crimson and pretty much straight away, Laggett, who is Crow's number oh, two, yes. is like, Tress, come on. And then he's like, I'm going to teach you how to fire a cannon because, you know, we need more people that can fire cannons. Yeah. Um, Here is a cannon. Here are spores. Fire. You just practice. And when you're good, I'll teach you how to do it. Mm. And then he leaves. Yeah. And then she's like, well, I don't want to. 
Yeah. So she does let Anna have a practice. Yeah. But it kind of felt very, what's this here for? Yes. Like it doesn't pay off in any way, shape or form. It, I think it, the way it pays off, I think, is that it, it, like, she basically has a scene where she meets everyone. Mm. She then spends some time with everyone. And then she helps everyone solve their problems. Yeah, yeah. And this is the spend time with Anne scene, so... Th- but, but we've already yeah. spent time with Anne. We know why mm. she's not allowed to shoot guns. Yeah, but we but that we heard that from someone else. We hadn't... like Until that scene, we hadn't seen it. Yeah, but we it. could have heard that yeah. from her yeah. rather than someone else earlier on. Yeah. Whereas here, like, yeah, it proved that she can't fire a cannon to save her life. Yeah. But there isn't any reason for her to be practicing because it's not gonna make a difference yeah. and Tress doesn't practice ever uses the gun and yeah. she never uses the cannons so yeah. there isn't any need for it yeah I mean I get what you mean in that it kind of just feels a little bit like uh, like it just just turns around basically the the the, the seed stops on the edge of the mm. on the edge of the two things oh no they see some rain so they need to take like a little break before they fully enter the thing mm. um and yeah, yeah, and so I, I do see what you mean, but I didn't mind too much. It didn't seem out of place to me. Um, yeah. And like I said, it's, it's a scene where we can spend some time with, with Anne, um, which then gets paid off later. Yeah. Um, well. But the, well, the one thing she does learn is she learns about how the cannonballs work with the with the the, the yes. mechanisms inside them, and about how the vines grow if you add a little water to them, rather than mm. if you add water to the aether, it fully explodes. If you add a little water to the vine, that then grows. Yeah, they then grow slowly, and so she has a little experiment. Yeah. Um, yeah. Know? Well, she knows that now they're in the crimson. Crow is going to go to the dragon. Mm. She knows that. She's got to stop Crow because she doesn't want Crow to Yeah. Succeed. Give her away. Well, she doesn't know at this point that Crow's gonna give her away. She works yeah. that one out slightly later, okay. I believe. I might be wrong. Who knows? Who knows? I'm sure people will tell me. Yeah. It's all good. Um But she knows that she's got to stop Crow from being successful. Um someone earlier fired a bullet at Crow. Yes. Well, Crow fired a bullet at herself. She literally to shot prove herself. A point. Yeah. But because the vines need her alive, they obviously came out, stopped the bullet. So Tress has decided she's going to make a bullet that does the opposite. Yes. So we'll fire backwards, if that makes sense. Yeah, so it fires... um, Yeah, rather than the Zephyrs exploding backwards, she turned it around so it fires spores forwards. And then she replaced the Zephyrs with uh, Verdant. Yeah. Yeah. So that it won't necessarily kill mm. Crow. Mm. Yeah. But it will immobilize her enough for them to mutiny. Yes. Essentially. Sorry, she doesn't replace the Zephyrs, she replaces the sunlight ones because it's a flare gun. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But she also changes, S- changes the pin so it... mechanism so it doesn't fire as soon as she fires the gun, it fires on impact. Or the the, the bullet fires on impact. That's what I yeah. meant, like she changes it so the metal yeah. bit breaks the water at a different yes. point in the cycle. Yeah. Um. So by doing that, she will be able to immobilize Crow. Mm. Great. That's mm. going to be great. She makes herself a special flare gun Yeah. out of a flare gun that she trades from Fort, who I love his trades. Yeah, like, his trading was really fun. <laughs> yeah. And just the fact that he's like, mate, you can't, I can't even begin to tell you how amazing this trade was. Yeah. <laughs> I've got so much from you. And you just got a flare gun. You got a flare gun. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, you cooking one meal for me would have made up for all of the meals I've cooked for you. Yeah. But I've managed to persuade you to keep doing it and I'm getting this in return. And I'm like, I love him. I love his people system. He is so good. want to know where he's from because he can't be off world, can he? No, I I do think he is from Like, he has to be from this world. Yeah. And I would like to know where. And yeah. I'd like to visit. I wish where we his did know more. Island was. Yeah, I wish we did, did know a bit more about the other seas because we only mentioned the five seasons, twelve. Yeah. And I know there will be a rosite one because obviously there's rosite yeah. in Lost Metal. Um, but I don't know if we know that's in this more. as well, isn't it? I think oh, they rosite, use it to patch. They the do. Boat. Yeah. They do use rosite to patch the boat. You're right. Okay. Yeah, I want to know what the other. Six spores that are the six aethers are also yeah. the apparently the bone aether. That's apparently a thing. 
Yeah. Uh, I want a purple one. I don't mind what it does, but I want one. Yeah, 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 an amethyst one, kind of. It doesn't have to be amethyst. Okay. Just, you know. Yeah, just purple. I mean, I'm sure there'll be one for like every colour of the rainbow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Quite standard. Standard, yeah, usual. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I feel like there is a lot more to explore on Tress's pirate ship. Yeah. And I'm expecting some sort of sequel yeah. somewhere. I feel like this is one of the... like uh, The thing is, is, I'm expecting these books, all of them, to not have sequels. Um, mm. These are all standalone, and he ruins during the pandemic. I don't think we're going to get... Even if we had another pandemic, I don't see him writing another, any more sequels to these. But... Fine. I know he is open to like he's he's been slightly more open to other people writing books in the Cosmere. Um, I think uh, Dan's working on one, uh, Isaac's working on one. Um, oh, I want Isaac's one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I have little monsters in it, <laughs> run yeah. around in their underpants, or I'll be mad. <laughs> no, his is um, I think he's a set in that <clears throat> era too. Um, and yeah, I know. Why? <laughs> Just let it die. Well, it's, he wants. Yeah, I think it's uh, like an Indiana Jones type adventure one. Like rather than like, no, no. Just okay. Isaac, don't do it. Yeah. Um, okay, so she experiments. She gets her flare gun. She like plays around with it and the the ship's hold. Um, and then something happens. Oh, she learns that she can grow the aethers and kind yes. of control them as she's growing them um, with by providing them with water. And so the sea has a couple of the 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 ship has a couple of um, close calls with rains. Mm. Um, and then it doesn't. And then it doesn't. And then it has a very much direct in uh, attack from some rains. Yeah. Um, and I really liked the sequence because it kind of. Um, uh, I really like this because it showed a slightly like different use of the 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 aethers, and it showed how the bond can be used to control them, in some degree. Uh, they the sea stops the ships the ship stops two lines of rain start coming from two different directions that are going to hit and completely wipe out the ship. Um, Tress has them take a big barrel of water and put it under the boat, which obviously they're very like, no, don't put water near the near the spoil. Yeah. What are you doing? Um, and then she drops in a um, uh, she drops in a pod full of zephyr spores, and as she does that, she commands them to grow upwards rather than just explode hours. She is like, please just go up. I'm giving you a bunch of water. Go up. And they grows into a massive tree that kind of yeah. holds the holds. So cool. It's very cool. This is one of the things yeah. I would have loved a bit of artwork. For. Yeah, this should have got a bit of this artwork. This should have got artwork. Like so, the the, the ship gets held up in this big tree above the the Crimson Sea. Uh, mm. It's fantastic. Love it. The the spines pass. Uh, there's the great line about how like. Um, some people find rain comforting, but on Tress's world, the sound of rain, especially the sound of rain hitting your boat, is is like that's a death sentence. Yeah. And so they're like, kind of, they're, they're like terrified. Um, but I was like, gonna say, yeah. in one of the first close calls they got, yeah, one of the ships, like guys, dies. Yes. Because the aphers obviously get on the boat. Yeah. They overpower the silver, they expand, and he gets spiked up. Yes, and he gets spiked up, and it was very sad. It wasn't anyone that we actually even had a name for, so it's all good. No, you get his name afterwards. We get it afterwards. Afterwards, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, like, he wasn't the main character, yeah. so, like, yeah, it's, yeah, fine. Yeah, it it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's worse. Um, so, yeah, and um, after that, I think um, Crow gets very concerned because the, the, the crew... They love Tress. Tress, mm. they're like, they're like, she saved us, and she sees this, and she's like, oh no, I think I'm losing my crew to this girl. Yeah. And so I can't remember what she does. She does something that makes the. Um, I think she's announced there's only two days left until they get to the dragon. And so the Sele, Anne, and Fort are like, cool. I think we need to mutiny now. Mm. Like, um, Tress is like, okay, cool. I've got this plan. Let's do these things. Um, and then she looks over and she sees a midnight essence hiding in the shadows. Hiding in the shadows. And she's like, boop, and, and she, she pops goes, it. Boop. Um, and yeah, and she's like, crap, Crow just on to us. And Crow summons everyone, the, everyone to the top deck. Yeah. Uh, where Crow then turns around and basically says, uh, okay, let's have a little dually duel for captainship of the ship. Um, I'll give you three guns, and I'll I won't have a gun, and they're like that's unfair because your vines will kill will save you. We can't kill you, and she's like no 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 you don't have to kill me. You gotta kill Lager. You can kill Lager 
before I can take you guys out, you get the ship. And they're like, that seems reasonable. And she immediately wipes the floor with all three of them. Mm. Um, just just devastates them. Yeah. Um, Shoots one in the leg. Yep. Oh, breaks yeah. Breaks yeah. Fort's talky board. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I think she just punches Tress in the gut. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's, that's enough, yeah. Tress has never taken a punch before, you know. Uh, yeah. Just goes down. Easy, easy done. Obviously. Obviously. Um, so, yeah, and then she says, oh, by the way, we're also here. We're also at the dragon. Yeah. Uh, it's not two days away. It's now. Yeah. Yeah. So then they go to the dragon. Mm-hmm. And we get to meet dragon. We get we get to meet Zixis, the, the dragon. I mean... Uh, not gonna lie, part of me was really hoping he wasn't actually a dragon. Okay. He was just known as dragon. Okay, now and this like, isn't uprooted. No, he's I know, <laughs> I know, that's what I was hoping for. I was yeah. hoping for Brandon's version of uprooted, and yeah. I was hoping the story would take a wild that turn. That would be a wild turn if that happened. But no. But we get he's an first? actual dragon. He's an actual oh. dragon who, in the art, looks like a man <laughs> crouching down. And even Howard Lyon was like, yeah, I used a human as like reference for this. Um, so even though they do walk on all fours in the in the image, it looks a little bit like he, they walk on two legs. That's not the case. Um, but yeah, I don't care. they got all dragon steel all over them. They got they yeah. got they got metal all over them. They've got big horns. Uh, Zixis just casually is like he can awaken. No problem. No biggie. Mm. Um, I'm sure he's got other magics down there. Oh, I really hope oh, so. Oh, big time. He knows Hoyd. He knows Hoyd. Oh, everyone knows Hoyd. I know, uh, but like, Hoyd, you, know, you know, even a dude under the sea knows Hoyd. Even the know? dude under the sea knows Hoyd. Well, Hoyd kind of killed God like 10,000 years ago. So, you know, yeah. is, is, is everyone... Allegedly. Alleg allegedly, allegedly. Allegedly, Hoyd killed God. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, uh, they have... Well, the intention was, is that... Crow would exchange Tress uh, for getting rid of the spores in her. Mm. That's not what happens, is it? Um, Tress is like, ah, oh, you want someone that's not scared of spores that can be your servant. So she starts bargaining for him to take Crow instead, instead. of her. Yeah. And it was a really cool little it's like fantastic. talk showdown. Yes. Because they're both countering each other's points yeah they're both having to like play themselves down and then big up the other <laughs> one which is really fun but <laughs> when the other one plays themselves down they have they're then sort of like turning that into how it's actually a, a positive. positive yeah and it was so funny to like it's, it's have good. that back and forth yeah one thing i really like about this book is tress solves every none of Tress's problems are solved with violence mm. she solves every problem with talking with cleverness um like only the villains use violence. Um, like the the trust never does, and I really like that. I think that's fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just thought it was really cool. Yeah. Um, and essentially, she manages to convince the dragon that she's got too much to live for to stay with him. Yeah. And Crow doesn't. Yeah. And yeah, he's got a point. She, she's got a point. Yeah, I, I love at the end. Like she makes a big impassioned speech about like I have a man I love. I've got to go find him. And I will spend every day of the rest of my life trying to usurp you, trying to escape, trying to make sure your plans are like, mm. I will be the biggest pain in your ass I could possibly be. And yeah, and, and Zixis is like, do you know what? I'll, as an excuse, I'll say I gave you away. <laughs> I, I didn't take you because you like invented the, the flare gunny sprouty yeah, thing. Even which though is, we've totally already got that text. Yeah, yeah, apparently. No, sorry. Yeah. The sorceress is the one that announces that that tech already exists, exists elsewhere on the planet. Says, "Yeah, okay." Yeah, um, but but essentially, even... her future research with spores was enough for him to yes. convince him that she would be an asset to let yeah. continue living above the spores, or at least that's the excuse he yeah. said he would use. Yeah, which is like, okay, you've actually she did convince him, but. You know, yeah. even so, even so, yeah, it's nice. Um, so yeah, she walks out with oh, she, in exchange for Crow, she asks for three gifts, three, three gifts. Oh, well, when you get to the dragon, mm. you can exchange a person for gifts. like a big favor. Yeah, and so she's like, instead of one big one, can I just get three little ones? Yeah, and then obviously she goes back to the ship. She's got a new talkie board for Fort. Yeah. Which is really sweet. Yeah. Uh, she's got some special glasses for Anna to fix her 
eye imperfection which causes her to struggle with aiming. Yeah. And she's got a letter for Sally. Sally yeah. Um, telling her where her dad is because this time she, she's, she's been looking for her dad. Yeah. yeah. So that was really, really yeah, sweet. Yeah, it was really nice. She didn't get anything for herself. She got something for her friends. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I do feel sorry for the other people on the boat. Every, all the other dugs, yeah. That, like, like, probably have their own thing going. For yeah. Them, but, like... But because they never got a, uh, an adventure with Tress, they never got to sit down and talk with Tress, they didn't get gifts. No. no. So it's a bit of a shame. Like, yeah. she should have at least, like, brought them back some alcohol or something. Yeah, like know? a nice... Like, some nice... Like, a like, pirate's like, rum. Yeah, they're pirates some rum. Just get, like, a barrel yeah. of rum as well. But yeah, but it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Even even Crow was willing to give them rum, you know. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so they sail for the midnight. The midnight. The midnight. I will say. So this is our first occurrence of a dragon on the page in the Cosmere, and mm, found okay. mentions of dragons. Okay, well, no, 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 but this is like the first time they've appeared. Had a story of a dragon. This is the first time they've actually appeared. Um, and I'm like, I wish it was longer. And I just, I just was like, I wish this was longer. I, no, because he's saving all the cool dragon stuff I for know, when we actually get the dragon but shard. But I want cool dragon stuff now. You well, know? we're going to get dragon shard. Well, we don't, dragon shard isn't going to be cool dragon stuff. They're too busy being a shard. That's cool shard stuff. Dragon stuff. No, because yeah. they're physically a dragon and therefore yeah. they're going to still... Yeah, but it'll be like a glowy dragon, you know, I'm sure. And is that not better? No, I just want a normal dragon. I want a flesh and blood. Like, what are you doing? What's, what's going on? Technically, it's, it's people, uh, yeah. blood and dragon steel. Oh, yeah, yeah, Well, I don't know if they... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, they've got dragon steel scales. Yeah. 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 They're cool. He's cool. He's, 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 he's a cool dude. He's a cool dude. Yeah. Yeah. I like uh, him. I like him. I reckon it will get him again at some point. I have point. a feeling he, he's going to be a... I don't think he's a one-off character. I no. think we're going to see him again. The fact and I think we're going to see his new slave girl. Yes. The fact he's been mentioned twice, like once in Arza Kingdom and now he's on screen. I'm like, I feel like this is a dragon Brandon's like got a thing for, you know? Yeah. He's like, I think he likes this dude. Yeah. So yeah. Hopefully. So then they head into the midnight. midnight. Well, technically they don't head into the midnight. Oh, I was just... So after the dragon, yeah. they decide they're going to sail for the midnight. Yeah. But Tress doesn't want to go into the midnight because they've got to defeat the sor- Like, the sorceress has it all trapped. Oh, yes. Okay, so that's... she experiments yeah. a bit more with midnight spores yes. to work out how much control she can get over them. Yeah, she wants to see if she can take control of a midnight essence yeah. of someone else's. Um, Huck sabotages them by throwing all the food over yes it. yes i forgot about that because obviously he's still trying to stop her from going yes, to the midnight big time um however it's then like well remember earlier we foreshadowed that you can eat the green spores yeah just eat the, yeah, green, just spores. Eat the green spores yeah so that was fine that didn't affect them they kept going um and then they stopped at the border yeah and then went to the midnight mm. There we go. She tries so hard. Yeah. So, the Midnight Sea. Not quite. Not quite. We're on the border of the Midnight and the Crimson. We are, uh, yes. Tress has decided that it is too dangerous to risk everyone going into the Midnight. Yeah. So she decides that she's going to take a little rowboat and go by herself <laughs> until she's confident that it will be safe for the others to join. Yeah. <laughs> and then Huck... He's in his little rat cage because yeah. he's been a bad rat. So he- yeah, he, uh, he he got someone to throw the food and supplies overboard. Been a bad rat. Yeah, so now he's in his rat cage yeah. and Tress is taking with her on the rowboat because he yeah. insisted that he go with he's her. He's like, Tress, take me with you! By the way, that's the voice that Michael Kramer gives him. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> I would have believed it. <laughs> I can't do audiobooks. So she's in her rowboat she now enters the midnight sea yes. with her little ratty boy. Yep. And midnight monsters come and attack, and she realizes that she's got, although she can control midnight spores, yeah. she definitely is not strong enough to overpower these yeah. serpent creatures. The sorceress has given the commands, the sorceress has given these guys is like, intentionally stops them from being taken over just by bargaining water, mm. you know? So, yeah. Yeah, no chance. So Huck then saves them by saying, I am Huck the rat. 
take me to the sorceress because apparently this has been pre-arranged. Yep. Hmm. Sad. Yeah. So they do. Um, they take them to the island. Yeah. The rocks are fine. Like, are oh. fine. Like they don't damage the boat as they go through because the serpents like, lead them there. Yeah. The metal men that guard the island don't attack, and the door is to the tower. Opens it's up. there and open. Yeah. So they go inside to the sorceress. Yeah. And so we finally get to meet the sorceress. And I really liked the whole thing. Because we've been hearing that she's like a horrible person. But generally, Brandon doesn't just write despicable people. I don't know. You've met Wayne. True. True. <laughs> You're dizzy. Um, and so when we introduced the sorceress, by the way, her name, Ryana. Uh, she is a member of the Eerie, who are the secret organization of Elantrians that were trying to steal preservation and secret history. Huh. You know, Kelsey? Yeah. Yeah, Kelsey, yeah, yeah. He's, like, she's one of those. She's oh, like, and, like, that's she's, cool. Yeah, she's like in secret history. So not like a, like, oh. Yeah, she's named. Yeah. Do you know what? I hadn't connected them. There I knew go. she was an Elantrian because yeah. they spoke about how she's obviously got the glowing skin, hmm. but at one point it was all like not. Yeah. So obviously she was there throughout Elantrian's yeah. calling and yes. then became an Elantrian again. Yes. Didn't realise that she was a secret history Elantrian. Yeah, she's a secret history Elantrian. That's really cool. Yes. Um, and yeah, she was cool. And like, they just made her, they, they just they just wrote her, I was like, yeah, oh yeah, she's just, she's not like evil. She's just a horrible person. Yeah. Like some people just delight in other people's suffering and she's just one of those people. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, cool, yeah, good villain. Fine with it. Yeah. Fine with it. I'm one of those people, I relate. <laughs> <laughs> so during their confrontation, mm. they um, turns out that Huck was charged with Ch Huck is a prisoner of hers. Yep. He was charged. He was told that he would end up bringing the person he loved the most to the island. Yes. To break his curse, they would need to be cursed. Yes. And he's accidentally done that without wanting to or willing yeah. to. Yeah. And he's tried really hard this whole journey to like Not stop have this, happen. this from yeah. happening. And it still happened. Yeah. And now the sorceress has Tress. Um, yeah. So Tress is stuck. Um, the tower that the sorceress lives in is all like futuristic. Oh, and it's yeah. it's got all this like tech stuff in it. Yeah, it's got like, <laughs> there's the line where the sorceress was sat at her desk on her laptop. Uh, sorry, on her magic seeing square. <laughs> <laughs> I assumed it was a tablet. No, she, it, was a ta it was a laptop. He explicitly called it a laptop. Oh. Yeah. Although from the way it sounds, it does sound like it's probably one of those ones that either has a detachable keyboard because she does pick it up and start using it as a tablet. Mm. Um, or it's just like, um, it's like a Surface Pro where it's like also mm. a tablet that you can just like flip it I don't know. Like. Add I don't it know. to the list. Add I don't it know. To the list. Who knows? No, it's yeah. on the list of questions. Oh, it's on the list of questions now. But, <laughs> Tress is all like, haha, I defeated your challenges. That means I get to go free. Um, she's like nah she's nah, like nah lol and then but she does turn around and I can't remember, how does he, she get her to the point where she's like yeah here's Charlie I think she just was like um so they talk for a bit yeah and then she's like you know what you can go yeah off you go there's your Charlie yeah Charlie appears they're happy to see each other they start leaving the tower yeah and just before they leave Tress realises that something isn't right. Yes. And she finally realizes that Huck was Charlie all along. Yes. And she storms back in and she's like, no, I want my Charlie. Oh, my Charlie, not this poser. And she like picks up Huck and he's yeah. been crying and yeah. she's like, I'm sorry it was you all along. Yeah. And they're reunited. And then Tress gets like trapped to the wall. Yes. She like. With magic chains. Yes. Um, uh, and then they. Re and then she realizes that it wasn't Huck and her that were going to be strong enough to defeat the sorceress. It was so, Hoyd. Yes. It was Hoyd all along. It was Hoyd all along. Um, so yeah. yeah, as we have not mentioned at any point in this video. How did we forget to talk about Hoyd? <laughs> uh, I don't know how he had four times to it. Um, <laughs> I do. He's easy to forget. Mm. Really easy to forget. He's like a minor character in Cosmos. Like, you don't yeah. really notice don't him. Actually hear him yeah. um, so, Hoyd has been on the ship the whole time. He's as cabin like, boy. Yeah, cabin boy. Yeah. Um, he has a very similar curse. Um, as in... <laughs> 
He has He's a, been cursed. Uh, yes. Um, and Tresh uses him to find the location of the Sorceress's yes. Island. Yeah. Because she's obviously realised that you can't talk about the Sorceress. Yeah. So when he goes quiet, it's because it's to do with his it's curse. It's because she's correct, you know, yeah. Um, so she's managed to locate the island through him. And she realises that he is the one that needs to step foot on the island to break... His curse. His curse. He needs to get back to the island, yeah. And in doing so, he'd be able to save her. Yes. Um, so, whilst this is all going on, and she's, like, distracting the sorceress... Yeah. There's, like, CCTV cameras <laughs> that they're, like, talking to Fort through his magic board yeah. using. Um, yeah. And the crow song arrives at the island nice and safe. Yep. And they use Tress's cool spore... Cannon, cannon to take out the the, the awakened yeah. robot men. Um, and then just as the sorceress is about to curse Tress with the worst curse that she possibly can, mm -hmm. Hoidy Boy turns up. Hoidy Boy turns up! And because he's now on the island, his curse is gone. Yes. So he can use his magic again. Yes. So he does her magic against her to like create a shield, yes. stopping her from cursing Tress. Yeah. And he's like... I'm back. I'm back, bitches. I'm not cursed anymore. And did you pick up on? Did you pick up on what it is that they bet on? Um. Do you remember? I know from the beta, I didn't pick it up on this version. Oh, um, okay. So on this version, the bet was um, if Hoyd can make it back to the island, there the curse go. will make him an Elantrian. Yeah. Um, because he that he's been trying to be an Elantrian for if assuming this is. A couple of hundred years in the future. I was going to say, he's yeah. been trying to get that Elantria magic for a while it's now. It's probably the most powerful one in the Cosmere. It's it's pro yeah. it's, ma it's magic programming. It's yeah. it's you get to do anything you want, really, with the uh, with Aeon Door. Like, yeah. it's I powerful. mean, you'd think with all the magic systems he's inherited so far, yeah. he wouldn't need another one, but he you'd does. He does, now. he needs that one. So that now yeah. he is a nice glowy boy, mm -hmm. and he's no longer cursed. He's got back there. Tress is now no longer going to be cursed. Yeah. And it's very much a case of, look, you stay here, you're going to come to harm. Yeah. Or you can leave. Yeah. And being an Elantri, and she obviously judges that it's safer not to risk it. Yeah. So she leaves with her tower. Yeah. Um, Big spaceship. Good. Mm. And then Tress is obviously like, yo, um, can we fix my rat? Yeah, my rat. Yeah. Um, so Hoyd changes the wording, the wording slightly, that when they get back to Tress's home, yes, the curse will be that, lifted. Yes. So then we get our epilogue. Yeah, the epilogue. Very quickly before we go into the epilogue, go for it. I want to talk about the fake um, Charlie. Go for it. When the light weaving of Charlie falls off of him, mm. the thing underneath is described as reptilian. Mm. It's like a reptilian humanoid. Oh, yeah. Which is not something we've ever seen in the Cosmere or even mentioned. Look, I have no idea what this thing is. Look, and I'm very we have excited crap about it. people. We have crap people. We've now got reptile lizard people. people. We've got lizard people now, which is very cool. But we've also got the strange species that we don't really know about that keep the getting... The thing life. Yeah. yeah get vaguely referred to at the beginning of the book yes. and then never mentioned again. Yes. So it's possible yeah. it could be something to do that. It won't be. Yeah. Let's face it. Brandon's already got like a secret secret book coming oh, 100%. out. Oh, 100%. That that is part of. You just watch like come come New Year's Secret Project 5 is going to come out and it's going to be Secret lizard History 2 and it's going to be Lizard, lizard people, people and the Fane Life and it's going to be, you know, it's yeah. going to be Tamu Kex in there. It's just going to be... It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. But... Yeah, interesting to see where that one's going. Yeah, so the the epilogue is everyone just kind of gets what they want. They finally they got Sully's dad back. Yeah. Um, They've all yeah learned how to speak sign language so that Bork yes. can communicate without needing his boards. Yeah. Um, Anne is I'm assuming better at shooting yes. stuff. Yes. Yeah. Um, she'll get better anyway. Yeah, it's yeah. all good. Yeah. Um, and then they return to the rock. So that Charlie can become a human again. Yep. And obviously, like, he's running around naked because, you know... As a rat, he never wore clothes. Yeah, and I can't blame him. Why yeah. would you? Why would you if you don't have to? It makes sense. Do we have to take our clothes off for this But No, we're okay. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so they get back to the rock. Just... I mean, 
I feel like they went back just to show off to the Duke. A hundred percent. Look what we did. Th they went back to pick up Tress's parents. Nah, they went back to show off. to be like, oh yeah, people can now leave the rock. However, if you live on the rock for 20 years, you get a big retirement mm. like fund. Um, which is a great secret, which is great. Because if I was the king, I'd be like, oh yeah, I totally will pay people in 20 years time if they live on the rock. Yeah, yeah, okay, I'll definitely agree to that. And then, and then in 20 years' time, you'd be like, uh, no. Uh, no. Exactly. It's, it's, it, it puts the problem off for another 20 years. Easy yeah. Done. You find another solution. Exactly. Um, hello. Um, so, yes. Okay. So, Tress of the Emerald Sea. Yeah. I, so, I... On your ranking, on my where rankings. is it currently? So, okay. On my ranking, before I read it, after I'd read the betas, this was my number three. Yeah. After reading this one, but having not read anything beyond the bases on the other three, this is now my number two. Okay. Um, I don't know if I should say what order they're in. Um, no, 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 because we're okay. going to get to them as we we'll get to them. We'll go to them as we get on to them. On the screen, I want there to be like a list like of Like a four. question marks. Yeah, yeah. With like one with just we're, Tress. We're for Tress is now my number two, and Tress is now your number one. Uh, you didn't of... ask me yet. You said this was your favourite like four wow. times at the beginning of the video. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. still it still is my favourite. There's yeah. I don't know, there's kind of a quaintness to it that I yeah. really like. Yeah. It's hard to describe, but like I really love Tress as a character. Yeah. And although there is another secret project that I know is most people's favourite, and you know exactly which one I'm talking which about. Which one do you think is my favourite? No, 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 not oh. but as in like most people that have baited. There is one that is There is one yes. that is which ranked is, higher. Which is my favourite as well, yeah. Is it? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. the one that, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> um, and I know that that's most people's favourite, and it's my second favourite. Yes. But for me, this one's just got something that I vibe with. Yeah. And that's what sets it a little bit higher than the other one. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Out of the four secret projects that I may or may not have read, um... I haven't disliked any of them. Oh, like, 100%. they've all been solid, great books. Yeah, my least favourite secret project is still a great book that I really enjoyed. Yeah, it's, like, it's, yeah. I don't reread books. Yeah. Like, once I've read a book, like, that's me. Yeah. Like, I don't reread things because I find it really difficult to get back into it knowing what's going to happen. Yeah. Like, I like the surprise of not knowing. Yeah. So this is probably the first time I've actually reread a book. Yeah. And I didn't hate it. I yeah. didn't find myself like trying to rush through it because I know what's going to happen. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed rereading it. And I liked finding the changes from the first version yes. I read. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it a second time round. And I look forward to reading all the other secret projects. Yeah. And working out what my ranking's going to be by the end of this. I know, I'm, I'm curious how mine's going to change. I mean, but, don't get me wrong, yeah. I know my number four spot isn't going to change. I don't think my number four spot's going to change, but I think we'll have different number four spots. I know for a fact <laughs> we've got different number four spots, but I'm fine with that yeah. because, as I said, they're great books, and if they're your kind of genre, yeah, I'm sure that they are, like, the perfect thing. Yes. But as I said when I read Era 2, there's a couple of books that aren't normally my thing yeah that i got really into and yeah. i actually enjoyed reading yeah and i know one of them is your number four yes but yeah i still enjoyed reading it even though it's not my kind of thing yeah and like tress was a solid one for me yeah. i absolutely love this book um i probably wouldn't read it again because yeah. i don't reread books yeah but i still really loved it it's just a fun little adventure run yeah really really liked it I'm, I'm just i'm yeah it's it's i hope the rest of you have enjoyed the this first secret project mm. as much as we have um and yeah i love the artwork oh artwork's great so excited for the artwork yeah. on the other books it's yeah. gonna be i'm so excited like i wasn't expecting it to have artwork throughout it and yeah. i really love that and i loved each chapter the little, it slightly little, changed yeah and it was really cool like watching it sort of slowly develop yeah and i love like i really enjoyed that yeah um so yeah that's my take that's i my... love dress yeah dress is great i look forward to rereading the others yes 
So thank you guys for watching. Um, like I said, we're going to be doing one of these for every single one of the secret projects, including the next one, which is obviously, uh, I don't want to say too much. Um, let us know if you want us to like do something different. Like we we kind of went a bit more for the classic style when you were first reading them, where we recounted the events of the book. Um, so let us know if you enjoyed. Uh, let us know if you want us to talk about anything else. Maybe the pet's view on the book. Uh, I don't know. Either way, thanks for watching. You can find the rest of us on 17shard.com. We have a we have a we we obviously have a YouTube. Um, we have a Spotify, you can find our shows on, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Discord, you can come join in wonderful conversations. Um, we have other shows like Shardcast, The Diceborn, and, and the, the other one, Span Reads. Um, and yeah, uh, find us, and we have Patreon as well, so you can give us money. So thank you so much for watching, and bye! Bye!